In today's video, we continue on with our NHL GM report card series. We're working our way through all the teams in the Atlantic Division. We're now we're down to the two teams in Florida. So today we take a look at the Tampa Bay Lightning and grade the work on Julian Breezebaugh's trades, signings, and free agent signings around this offseason. We'll take a look at that and grade his work coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have an NHL GM report card series to continue on with. And today we look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning were one of the more fascinating teams with the offseason. Uh, certainly some interesting trades, uh, some... You know, big part of their team moves on. Steven Stamkos. This really has been quite the offseason for Breezeball and the Lightning, and we've seen lots of changes. So we're going to discuss those changes, and of course, grade his work. So we're going to start by first looking at the different trades that they made, and then we'll get into the signings and see what we think of the moves and what uh, if this, this team is better or not than it has been recently. So the first big trade they make was acquiring the signing rights of Jake Gensel from the Carolina Hurricanes. They gave up a third round pick to do that. And when they acquired Gensel signing rights, you knew they probably weren't going to give up a third if they weren't confident they were going to get him signed, which they ultimately did. And most of us kind of knew that probably spelt the end to Steven Stamkos. Um, so as much as Jake Gensel is a great player, it did cost them their captain. I know a lot of people make the argument that Gensel is a better 5-on-5 five -five player uh, at this stage of his career than Stamkos, and maybe that's the case. But Stamkos has still been um, a great leader there. He's been a, a first overall pick, lifelong lightning, holds a lot of team records, uh, You know, very important to that team in that room, and ultimately... You know, some people feel like he was almost betrayed. I know at the end of the day, though, this is a business and people need to remember that. Um, but obviously the Lightning feel that Gensel right now makes them better than Stamkos. I think that's fair for them to say based on this move. But Gensel comes over in their first big trade and they get it done. So ultimately, Jake Gensel's a good player. So for the trade itself, we're going to give them good grades for that. Of course, they also sent Tanner Janot to the Los Angeles Kings around the time of the draft, and they actually got a return. I thought they might have to do a cap dump here and send something with Janot um, for future considerations. But they actually got like a, sec a second and seventh round picks back, or second and fourth, sorry. So like the fact that they got a couple of picks back for Janot after what they gave up for him and how the, the uh, play has gone for him, um, that's a pretty good piece of work as well. I would not give LA a good grade on that trade. Uh, they had a significant trade, though, uh, at the draft as well. Uh, shocking a lot of people trading Mikhail Sergachev, uh, who has a long-term deal, and right before his trade protection kicks in, traded to Utah in exchange for defenseman J.J. Mosher, a second-round pick, a seventh-round pick, and top prospect who's a centerman, Connor Geeky. Uh, Geeky looks like a pretty good prospect so far. He's had a good time with Junior. He's ready to turn pro, so we'll see uh, how things pan out for him. I mean, you never know sometimes, right? I mean, obviously, he's looked like a real solid prospect. Time will tell. But, uh, you know, that's a good return. They get a, a good prospect, uh, a capable, serviceable defenseman, obviously somebody who's not quite who has not played to the level Sergeyev has, and they get a few picks. But it gives them some more flexibility cap-wise. Um, it shakes things up. But Sergeyev has been a big part of their team. Uh, you know, they wouldn't have signed him to that long-term deal in the lucrative money if they felt like uh, he wasn't worth it. And, of course, before any of that, they also picked up Ryan McDonough and brought him back from Nashville. Uh, so McDonough, along with a fourth-rounder, goes to Tampa for a 2025 um, second and a 2024 seventh. So a second and a seventh to Nashville for McDonough and a fourth. So that's, you know, if you think about it, it's almost almost for nothing, really. So, you know, Ryan McDonough was a big part of their decor before. They had to move him out because of uh, cap reasons. Uh, he did have trade protection. He had to work with them on that. Uh, just like, you know, we've seen here with Sergeyev and Stamkos, they played tough love here with McDonough and said, listen, we're we have no choice but to move you. We have somebody that will take you if we put you on waivers. So why don't you work with us and uh, let's figure out our trade so we can get the cap space back. And they did that and sent him to Nashville for two years and now he's back. Now, McDonough's a good defenseman, but he is a bit older. Um, so, you know, if you think about Sergeyev going out, McDonough coming in, uh, 
you know, it's, I don't know, right? Are they better? That's the question we're going to analyze here a little bit further. But those are the four trades they've made. And generally speaking, they've gotten pretty good returns. Uh, like I said, it's tough to say that they win the Sergachev trade right now because they're moving out the best piece in that trade, right? So, you know, the return looks decent. It's just difficult to say. Right now, I'd give the edge to Utah, but long term, if Geeky works out to be you know, close to the prospect that we think he's going to be and the picks turn out to be anything that plays for any length of time, then perhaps uh, it's a good deal overall. Signing-wise, uh, internally, they, of course, they, they had a few deals to get done. Um, they get a, an extension done for Victor Hedman. Now, he was not given the Stamkos treatment here. Hedman was given a pretty good lucrative contract to remain and likely will be the next captain of the Lightning. Uh, he gets a four-year, $8 million per season, so $32 million total, uh, which is very fair for what Hedman brings. He's still playing at a high level, um, still eating up a lot of minutes, giving you a lot of offense. He's still, you know, the same defensive league uh, uh, defenseman. Like, you know, he's a, a beast out there. Um, so Hedman being one of the game's better players and has aged relatively well, I have no problem with the deal. Uh, I, I like that. I would have liked to have seen Stamkos get a similar deal, but unfortunately that never happened. J.J. Mosher, who they picked up in the Sergeyev trade, gets a two-year deal at 3.375. I think you're going to see Mosher's game grow. Uh, obviously, he's put up decent numbers for Utah or for, for in Arizona, and he's going to get to play with a, a more established and uh, more talented group of forwards. So in all honesty, I think Mosher will probably get – more points and more production than he has there. So I think we're going to see him really kind of take a step forward. And, of course, Jake Gensel, after being acquired, gets a massive extension, seven years at $9 bucks a season. Um, it was believed that Carolina was offering the same kind of money, except um, he didn't want to pass up a chance to go to the Lightning. He obviously sees the Lightning as being – more attractive than the Hurricanes at the end of the day because it's believed, like I said, that Carolina was willing to give them the same dollars and they were able to give them eight years because he finished the season uh, on their roster because um, he was traded there right before the trade deadline, which is the cutoff point, right? So the Gensel contract is uh, is pretty good. I have no, uh, no issues with it. The Headman contract, very good. Uh, the Mosher contract, very good. Uh, externally, they bring in a few players to take a bet and take a chance here on Cam Atkinson, who was bought out in Philly. Gets a one-year deal at 900 k Problem. My only problem with the uh, Atkinson contract is not the contract itself. Is I think they're going to probably hope and expect that he can likely play a top six role, and I'm not sure that he's still capable of that. Now, if he proves that he's got more left in the tank and can give them at least 20, maybe 25, 30 goals, then he'll prove everybody wrong and have a comeback season, and they'll look make everybody look silly for uh, not paying them that kind of money elsewhere. But Atkinson, I have no problem with the contract. I just wonder if the expectation might be too high. Uh, Zemgus Gergensens comes over from Buffalo as a UFA, three years at 850. Normally, I would not be a fan of that much term for somebody who's going to play a bottom six role. But at 850, it's you know fully variable in the minors if it gets to that. Um, and you know for the money, I, I'm totally okay with that in that sense. A couple of other guys get a one-way, two-way, one-year, two-way deals. Uh, Jesse Yellenen, uh, formerly of Montreal. Derek Pouliot, formerly of a variety of teams. Uh, both come on as depth pieces uh, with two-way contracts. So at the end of the day, like most of the business here done through trade. Um, with Gergensons and Atkinson being the main UFAs that will likely have roster spots. So now you're likely looking at a top six in Tampa of uh, Point, Gensel, and Kucherov, and then likely a second line maybe of Sorelli, Hagel, Atkinson perhaps, which is, you know, it really boils down to Atkinson. If he still has game left and he can give them the goals like he could five, six years ago, then maybe it'll work out. Otherwise, they are weaker in the top six. Uh, third line this right now, likely going to be Paul, Sherry, and Isamont. Not a bad line. I'm not sure Isamont's a third liner. I think he's better on the fourth. But you're looking at Gergensen's, Glenn Denning, and Schaff, Chafee. I think I think it's I don't know, Mitchell Chafee. Um, so maybe Jesse Ellen ch- challenges for a spot there. Either way, uh, I don't know that the fourth line's better either. Like. You know, I think this team looks weaker to me. Uh, on the blue line, you get a headman, um, maybe with Radish, perhaps, or Chernak. I'm not sure how they're going to do the pairs here, but the left side, you're going to have headman, McDonough, Mosier, um, with your right side being Radish, Chernak, Perbix. So the, your right side's not overly strong, to be completely honest. I know Darren Radish has proven the last year or two that he can play. 
I don't know that he should play that high in the lineup. So I wonder if they'll put Chernak with Hedman, maybe play uh, Radish with McDonough. I don't know how they're going to do the pairs here. Of course, the goaltending is the same, Vasilevsky and Johansson. So to summarize uh, the in and out, so addition subtraction-wise, going out of the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, roster, you've got Steven Stamkos, gone. Mikhail Sergachev, gone. Tanner Janot, gone. Austin Watson's gone. Anthony Duclair, who came over the deadline, gone. Calvin DeHaan, who was a, played on, on defense last year, a bit of a depth option, but did play a decent amount. He's not there anymore. Alex Barre-Boulet, also obviously gone as well. Uh, coming into the lineup, you've got Jake Gensel, Ryan McDonough, J.J. Mosher. You've got Connor Geeky, who's now in the organization. Cam Atkinson and Sir, uh, Zemgus Gergensen comes over as UFAs, as well as Yellenin and Pouliot, who we don't know if they're going to get roster spots. They may end up in the minors. So, um, you know, as far as players that you're likely going to like, definitely have at the NHL level, like in the forward group, you've got Jake Gensel and Cam Atkinson being your main uh, additions, guys who are definitely going to, well, Gensel will 100% play top six. We think Atkinson's going to get an opportunity to, to as well. And then you're going to have, Obviously, compare that to like Duclair and Stamkos at the end of the year being out. So, I mean, are they really better? I'm not so sure. Five on five, uh, I can see. But, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure where they're going to put Gensel in the power play. I mean, they might have to move some players around, maybe put him in the bumper spot, and uh, maybe Point, who likely uh, has played there a lot, maybe moves to one of the half walls. I'm not sure how they're going to reorganize the power play with Gensel being there. Uh, before it was just it was good with Point being in the bumper spot and Stamkos being on one of the flanks and Kucherov on the other side. Um, so going to be interesting to see how they do that. Not to say that it can't work and be just as effective. It's just going to be a very very different look for the Lightning. So are there, is the team any better or what? Like, where do they stand? Like the goaltending's the same. Uh, Vasilevsky, you could say, didn't have the greatest season last year. He obviously had surgery to start but missed the first part, um, and then he had kind of some ups and downs so obviously if Vasilevsky is the same as he was when they were winning cups a few years back then they're gonna have a pretty darn good goaltending tandem Johansson to me is still not the greatest backup they can't afford much more than what he brings uh but it's the same either way it's the same goaltending I don't know that we can say it's gonna be better because you have it's the same people on the back end like I said Sergachev, Dahan are not there anymore uh you got McDonough and Mosher come in I, I'm torn here. I mean, I, I really like Sergachev. Uh, I really like McDonough too. Uh, they're different style of, of player. Ryan McDonough's, a, you know, maybe short term, it might be the same or maybe a smidge better. But I don't know. Looking at the at the blue line, to me, their left side's pretty good. The right side's what concerns me. Um, so I'm not really convinced here that the blue line is that much better uh to be honest i i i'm gonna say at best it's the same maybe it maybe it taken a small step back and in the forward group i don't like their bottom six as much as i used to you're gonna have two maybe three players in there that are different two for sure and i don't know i mean at the same time if you look at what left like watson and Jano, you know um but ray boulet was mostly in the minors like it's not like they really lost anything there that was really good and that they're really, uh, you know, these guys are really, you know, steps back. But their bottom six could be better. And the top six, like, I just wonder if there's too much pressure on Atkinson. I think Gensel will play well. I have no doubt he'll probably get 35 to 40 goals, 70 points at least. Like, I can see him being a great fit there. Uh, absolutely. The second line kind of concerns me just because we don't know about Atkinson. He's a wild card and all this. So, in all honesty, the fact that they uh, that they let Stamkos go for nothing, they trade Sergachev, and, you know, I don't mind the return, but I can't say they're winning those deals right now. I'm giving Julian Breezeball's grade as a C. Because I don't know. I know some people think that this is going to be a re-energized, reversion of this team. I'm not convinced that's going to be the case. I honestly think the Lightning might be taking a little bit of a step back this year. Like they get some good pieces there, don't get me wrong. I just don't know that they're better. I'm not convinced of it as of yet, at least. So let me know what you think in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, of course, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.